Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report this weekend. Brian Grady, as well as Andrew Jackson, joining us this weekend. Brian, the main question right now that I'm hearing from a lot of farmers, especially in that western Corn Belt, is this heat, this dryness that, that we have this week, this forecast, that the grain markets don't really reflect what the forecast is, is, is showing. What is your answer to that? Well, I, I think the heat actually uh, here in Iowa um, where we have plentiful moisture and soil moisture in a lot of the areas is, is benefiting the crop. Now, the areas in, in northwestern part of the state, uh, southwestern part of the state where it's drier, uh, they're, they're going to see some of their crop hurt, I think. But uh, what I've seen of, of the state, and I've seen quite a bit of it uh, the past several weeks, is that we have a really big crop here in Iowa. The Illinois crop, uh, you know, it, there were areas that were a concern. And it's really coming along in the last three weeks. So we're looking at the central corn belt, the number one and number two producing states of Iowa and Illinois uh, that are looking at very big crops right now. And, and so that's going to probably offset some of those lost bushels in some of the other areas uh, out to the western and, and southern part of the uh, corn belt. Yeah, and we'll get into that a little bit more, especially as you get ready to, to set off on that pro farmer Midwest crop tour. But Andrew, as you look right now at the, the action of the markets this past week, is it the fact that Iowa and Illinois and some of those key states did get rain? Or is it truly this fun action and this fun liquidation that is the overarching theme of these markets right now? Well, I think that uh, the funds certainly if the funds certainly could shed a lot more and could do a lot more damage to this market. But one thing you got to ask yourself is how far do they want to push the market below six bucks, below 13 bucks, you know, or below eight dollar wheat uh, with a balance sheet as tight as it is. So, you know, the, I, I think right now the trade is probably looking at a 175 to 177 top yield, and that probably leaves us in an OK position. Um but it still leaves us with some risk if we do pull that crop down into the lower 170s on, on corn specifically. It's a little early to start guesstimating what the bean crop might be. Um, but it's hard for me to believe also that, uh, and I think the trade believes this as well, that you know we're going to see a corn crop below, you know, below 170 this year, uh, unless we have some really disastrous weather late. Uh, I think the funds are probably, uh, and fundamental traders are probably looking and saying, listen, we, we're probably going to be okay in the U.S. It's probably not going to be a bumper crop. It may not be a 180 crop, uh, but maybe we've got enough uh, gas in the tank to limp on in through the U.S. crop and then start thinking about record planted acreage in, uh, record planted acreage in South America. Yeah, so Brian, as you mentioned, you know, I, I know you've been really looking into this crop. I know recently you took a drive to, to, to get an idea, especially for Iowa's crop. But this heat and this dry weather, we are losing some bushels. But you think we are gaining more bushels than we're losing at this point? Uh, I would say that, you know, just based on where the crop condition ratings are here in mid-July, and, and I know that that isn't a direct correlation to final yields, but it does tell us something, and, and that's the health of the crop, that um, we have potential to, to get to a record yield nationally. Now, everything probably has to fall in place, and we know that the long-term forecast that uh, the National Weather Service just came out with this week uh, signals that it's going to be hot and it's going to be dry for a good portion of that uh, the growing uh, area in the Corn Belt, especially uh, the western and southwestern areas. Uh, kind of a, a mixed picture in terms of when we get into the eastern belt. So we're going to need some time with rains here, no doubt about that. But I can tell you that that Iowa is very good right now. That doesn't mean that there aren't some problem areas, but Iowa is very good. And Illinois has come a long ways here in the, the past several weeks. And when you got the number one and number two corn producing states in the United States uh, ripping along like they are at the moment, um, you can offset quite a bit of ill in, in some of those other states. Andrew, you know, you're in Kentucky. I know Kentucky and some of those other areas did get a rain last week. Definitely welcome news for some of those Kentucky farmers. Did it save the crop? Uh, part of the crop, it was certainly a million dollar rain, million dollar rain plus. Um, there's a central part of this, the central western part of the state that's been in pretty decent shape all season long, but uh, up along the Ohio River has struggled at times. Southern Kentucky into Tennessee has really struggled, especially the early planted crops. Uh, overall, this last rain really helped the later planted crop. And it's really a good thing we probably didn't get planted real timely this year. Um, so those rains had definitely helped. Uh, and, you know, two weeks ago, a week ago, I was getting a lot of calls about, you know, contract cancellations. Um, now I'm getting more, you know, that, uh, hey, let's uh, let's start thinking about cleaning out the old crop. Let's start thinking about, uh, you know, maybe some soybeans because, you know, hey, my, my bean crop looks really good. This has been ideal soybean. Bread. 
Yeah, so when you look at some of these truck bids and, and this basis that we've been talking about, what is it telling us right now? We're going to ask both Brian and Andrew later on U.S. Farm Report.